Our solar system is really a beautiful, amazing place. Uh, in this picture, we can just see some of the wonders. We've already talked in a previous lesson about the four inner planets, the terrestrial planets, and we've seen we've talked about the asteroid belt. Well, out beyond the asteroid belt, we have the four gas giants. Uh, there's a comet cut streaking in from the Kuiper belt or Oort cloud. Further on out, we actually have what um, could be the the Kuiper belt, and beyond that's the Oort cloud. We'll also talk in this lesson about uh, meteoroids and comets. The first gas giant is Jupiter, and Jupiter is truly a giant among giants. Jupiter is the fifth planet and by far the largest planet in our solar system. It is a gas giant that is so large that if it were hollow, all of the other planets would fit inside. Imagine that. All the other planets would fit inside it. It's the third brightest object in the night sky. Only the moon and Venus are brighter. Jupiter is about five AUs from the sun, and we all remember what an AU is. Jupiter is made mostly of hydrogen and other gases. It has a huge red spot that astronomers say is a hurricane that is three times larger than the Earth. Uh, I've read in places where it's theorized that if Jupiter were a little bit larger, it could have actually turned into a small star. Um, it's a very mysterious planet, and it actually gives off more energy than it gets from the sun. This picture shows Jupiter with its four largest moons. Galileo was the first person to ever see them, and of course he was because he was the first person to look at anything in the heavens with a telescope. But uh, this picture, the, the fact that he could see these moons actually orbiting Jupiter, uh, was really, really, really convinced him that we live in a heliocentric solar system. These four moons are Europa, Io, Callisto, and the largest moon in the solar system, Ganymede. Europa is very unusual because it is actually an ice world. Scientists believe that it has oceans covered by a layer of ice about six miles thick. Uh, and below that layer of ice, they believe there is an ocean of water. Jupiter has 16 named moons and about another 50 moons without names. So it's a, it's a monster. It's a solar system all by itself. You can easily see the four largest moons with a telescope. I've seen them myself, so it's very impressive. Saturn, the lightweight. Saturn is the second largest planet and is also a gas giant. As we all know, Saturn is famous for its rings. The rings are made of dust, small rocks, and pieces of ice. Some scientists think that the rings were formed by other objects that used to orbit Saturn, but they got all broken up. Saturn is the sixth planet and is the most distant object in our solar system that can be seen with the naked eye. Saturn has over 60 moons and its largest moon, Titan, is actually larger than Mercury. If you could find an ocean large enough, Saturn would float. It has the lowest density of any of the planets. Imagine a planet that would float on water. Whoa, it'd be a big ocean too. Uranus. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun. It has winds of over 500 miles an hour. One of the most unusual facts about Uranus is it is tilted at 97 degrees. And as we all know, the Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees. But can you imagine this planet is tipped slap over on its side at 90 degree angle? This causes each pole to get 42 years of daylight and 42 years of darkness. It takes 84 years to orbit the sun. And Uranus has 27 moons. So it's kind of interesting as we notice that all of the gas giants have lots of moons. Lots of moons are made of gases and all of them have lots of moons. That's one of the key characteristics that they all have in common. Neptune. The eighth planet in our solar system is Neptune. It is 30 AUs from the sun and was not discovered until 1846. It's named after the Roman god of the sea and from its beautiful blue color we can, you know, kind of makes you 
appreciate why it might have been named that. Neptune has 14 moons, and it takes Neptune 164 years to orbit the sun. Now, if you remember, Uranus, which is the seventh planet, only takes uh, 84 years. So this shows you that, that Neptune is just an incredibly much further distance out from the sun than, than even Uranus. Okay, now we come to the dwarf planets. Uh, this is something that interests and fascinates people. Uh, people are wondering all the time, like, what happened to Pluto? What happened to Pluto? Well, nothing happened to Pluto. They just changed what he was. Uh, this photo shows the sizes of dwarf planets compared to the Earth. So on the right, you see a, a piece of the Earth, and then this picture shows the five known or named dwarf planets. So if you look at that, you can get a real big impression that uh, a really good idea of how much smaller these dwarf planets are than what we would than even a terrestrial planet. And remember how much much bigger the gas giants are than the terrestrial planets. This photo shows the sizes of dwarf planets compared to Earth. In 2006, the International Astro Astronomical Union created a new description for small planets and call them dwarf planets. A dwarf planet is smaller than a planet but larger than an asteroid. It has enough gravity to cause it to be round. So far we have five named dwarf planets Ceres, Pluto, Haumea, Makemake, and Eris. Astronomers estimate that there are still hundreds of other dwarf planets in our solar system. So to give you a little more detail the, Ast the International Astro Astronomical Unit got together and they were planning to consider calling Ceres and Eris planets number 10 and number 11. They were going to go from 9 planets to 11 planets. And then other scientists began to say, well, what about the other uh, dwarf planets out there? What about the other objects out there? And so th they quickly realized that it could get out of hand and that before long, instead of having 11 planets, we might have 15 or 20. And so they came up with this idea to create a new category. And then, we, so we got the eight traditional planets. Uh, Pluto got downgraded because of its tiny size to calling a dwarf planet. And as you can see, um, if there's still hundreds of other dwarf planets, one day there could be a whole list of dwarf planets. Next we have meteoroids, meteors, and meteorites. Uh, in this picture you can see a, a meteorite that's laying on the ground. You can see how it looks like it's rounded. It's got holes in it. It looks kind of melted, which it is, because the incredible heat that meteors, meteorites experience as they pass through the atmosphere. Meteoroids are little chunks of rock and debris floating in space. And there's the key. Meteoroids are in space. Most meteoroids are either iron, stony, or iron-stony, which means they're a combination of rock and iron. When these chunks enter the Earth's atmosphere, we call them meteors. So as soon as a meteoroid, a meteoroid's out in space, it's a meteor when it hits the Earth's atmosphere or the atmosphere of any other planet. As they begin to burn in the atmosphere, we sometimes call them shooting stars because you can look up and see them and say, oh wow, there's a shooting star. And what a shooting star is actually is a meteor that's burning up. If they survive and hit the ground, then we call them meteorites. So any part of a meteor that actually winds up on the ground becomes a meteorite. And kind of a, a little memory device, a meteorite, because it's right here. Just keep that in mind, because you can actually walk up to it, it's on the ground, so it's right here. The last objects we're going to talk about today in our lesson are asteroids and comets. Asteroids are just giant meteors. In fact, all the asteroids in the asteroid belt, if they could be put back together, they would make up a world smaller than the moon. Um, so asteroids are usually made up of rocks or, or metals or combinations. So it's exactly the same thing as meteors, except they're just bigger. The final thing, comets. Comets are giant, dirty snowballs. They're made up of rocks and ice. Comets have extremely long, stretched-out orbits. Halley's Comet is the most famous comet, and it returns to Earth about every 76 years. 
So the amazing thing about comets is we think they come from way out beyond the edge of the solar system, either from the Kuiper belt or from the Oort cloud. And comets have uh, an orbit, kind of like if you took a rubber band and stretched it out. Uh, a number of years ago, I saw a beautiful comet uh, called hale Bop, And it's believed that hale Bop uh, took 2,000 years to make an orbit. So to come from the Oort cloud into the solar system and back out, that it took it 2,000 years. The beautiful, mysterious thing about comets is in space, they're, all, they're very, very hard to see because they're just, they're very dark looking. But as they begin to come closer to the sun, the sun's radiation causes these comets to begin to uh, evaporate. They give off some, uh, almost like steam, um, particles that stretch out behind them. Um, and as they come into the, towards the sun, these tails get longer and longer and reflect a lot of sunlight. So they're, they're really, really beautiful. Okay, I hope you learned a lot today.